the, the government is also joining us for this briefing. I won't drop these, I promise I'm just adjusting for the right purposes so that I have an opportunity to get through this. Good afternoon everyone and thank you very much for joining us. Um, I don't think it's too late in January to still say compliments of, for the new year. Um, and welcome to our press briefing where we will be detailing uh, what happened in the meeting of the Federal Executive to discuss matters pertaining to the City of Cape Town. My name is Pumzile Vandam, for you those, those that don't know me, I'm the DA's National Spokesperson. With me is the leader of the DA, Musi Maimane, and next to him, James Self, uh, the chairperson of the DA's Federal Executive. I'll hand over to Musi to take us through the statement, and then we'll take your questions thereafter. Good uh, afternoon, good evening, uh, everybody who is here, and good evening, fellow South Africans. I wish to say to all the people of this country, I wish you all a prosperous year and also to everybody who is here. I hope this year is a really good one for all of you. Today the Federal Executive met, as many of you have reported. We met to deal substantively with the city of Cape Town, its governance, the caucus of the city of Cape Town, and ultimately the leadership of that caucus has been given to Patricia DeLille. We, as a party, understand very deliberately that our critical focus is always to ensure that we put the interests of the people of South Africa first and ultimately the interests of the people of Cape Town. We always have a commitment as a party to clean government, accountable and transparent government wherever we govern. This has been and always will be the hallmark of what makes the DA the DA. It is a value in the organization that all South Africans, regardless of race, gender, creed, are equal before the law as consistent with our Constitution and that of the Constitution of the DA. It's within that context that the DA deliberated this manner around saying what is the situation in the city of Cape Town as it speaks to those two points, that there's the right to legal process, but equally so we have to consider and put first the citizens of Cape Town. The true test of any political party is what it does when confronted with serious allegations of political dysfunction, maladministration, and governance failures. And the DA, unlike many of our political competitors stand largely alone in acting with resolve in confronting such, such issues, even when those decisions, in fact, come at a very serious political cost. We understand that no political party is perfect in execution of its function, but for us, our principle and values and the overarching imperatives to act in the best interest of the citizen is what guides us all the time. And such, it is, uh, it is guided by those values that the DA has sought to uphold due process and the rights of Mayor DeLille and a number of councillors throughout this evolving matter. We have, as a result, sought to limit our public communication in this regard in respect of the rights of all involved and the issues concerned so that we can duly unpack what is happening. And ultimately, we believe the purpose behind today is to set at ease what has been the process where are we now, and what are the challenges that we faced? So, fellow South Africans, I want to say it has been deeply disappointing in some ways that Mayor Dilla has not displayed a similar regard for the best interests of the party and did similar levels of respect to due process, as a number of statements have been made that have been misleading and distortionary public statements throughout the process, both with regards to the DA's procedure as well as the variety of council initiatives that have been sought to probe her conduct, and amongst others. And in so doing, she's compounded what has already been a particularly difficult situation. I want to be clear 
and state a couple of things. With regards to all the public statements that have been issued, we reject the very notion that says that one individual is responsible for the spatial integration in the city of Cape Town. This was a DA's manifesto uh, uh, promise. It is derived from policy that says that we want to build a city that is integrated where citizens from all different races can live together. So it is not that any action you take against any individual is a stance against this issue. In fact, it is that we want to execute that in a manner that is consistent with our values but also achieves our manifesto as stated. Also note the fact that a number of months ago, when these challenges were put before us, we as a federal executive decided to establish a subcommittee that was led by the Chief Whip of the National Assembly, John Stianazen, along with the Gauteng Provincial Leader, John Moody, the Free State Provincial Leader, Patricia Kopane, and the ADEC Chair, Karen Smith. These are all leaders and South Africans who are diverse in both race and gender, but also demonstrate the requisite skill and experience to, in fact, execute the investigation into the city of Cape Town and to give a report back to the federal executive. The aim of that process was to inquire into the growing divisions that are taking place in the city and to answer the question, what is the role of the mayor in that regard, as well as a growing list of substantive complaints about the nature and style of the mayor's internal leadership. This was a process of exercising political judgment in response to political problems on issues rather than, in fact, a judicial process or whatever the case may be. Or rather than seeking to approach the matter as though it was just a narrow legal question. The subcommittee held many days of hearings and heard the testimony from a large number of councillors. The mayor was invited to come before the subcommittee. She declined the invitation and instead as it was a right, chose to communicate to the subcommittee through a legal representative. She was then given an extensive opportunity to be able to do so in order to ensure that her, her procedural right was, res was respected. The report that was then tabled before the party raised a number of issues, and these must be read together with the mayor's representation, were considered at length by the federal executive at a meeting on the 10th of December last year. Amongst the number of issues arising was that the federal executive deliberated on the following aspects. One, there was clear evidence of deep divisions of the caucus in the city of Cape Town. And these divisions were shown to have been as a result of the mayor's particular style, which was overwhelmingly viewed as unnecessarily autocratic, divisive, and misaligned to the democratic principles of openness and tolerance. It became clear that this had in contributing to a paralyzing culture of fear amongst elected public representatives, as well as a number of officials in the city of Cape Town. The consequences of which was material and impact on a rational, accountable, transparent decision making of the city. That in fact the organizational restructuring led by the mayor appears to have been used in certain instances to remove experienced officials in the city with a view of replacing them with officials whose loyalty to the mayor was prized over all else. That under the mayor's leadership, key decisions-making structures had been stripped of all their powers and functions, seemingly with a view to, to centralize overwhelming power in the mayor, undercutting the authority and democratically enshrined role of the mayoral committee, portfolio committees, and sub-councils, as well as the DA's commitment to bringing government as close to the people as possible. It would seem that the mayor has interfered with and manipulated appointments at senior management level within the city and some of its entities. A growing sense of a loss of confidence by the caucus and the leadership of the mayor, which affected governance in the city negatively and undermined effective service delivery. In particular, there has been a particular challenge about the mayor's often irrational, autocratic and divisive leadership style was seen to be especially problematic, and it was claimed saw her from the overstep in the boundaries of her authority and personally direct operational decisions such as specifications, awarding and timing of tenders, which all of this requires, in fact, an extensive level of testing.
in an ad hoc, highly inappropriate fashion. This in turn has created a real risk of an impending loss of senior and skilled technical staff from the organization. And as a result of often intolerable working conditions for the professionally qualified and legally mandated officials. The claims made in the protected disclosure by Craig Kesson, the executive director and the directorate of the mayor, as it relates to allegations of smell administration and serious governance irregularity and serious governance irregularities <coughs> and the alleged mayor's role therein. It must be equally noted that the mayor equally so has laid charges against a number of people in the caucus, and those will equally serve as part of the consideration going forward. Therefore, after careful consideration of these primary points of concern, the federal executive at the time asked the mayor to provide reasons as to why she should not resign. The need to act with dispatch was heightened by the prolonged drought and our desire to ensure that there's unity of purpose within both the political and administrative leadership of the city to effectively govern the city of Cape Town and to respond to the issue. The mayor was again given an extension so as to be able to give sufficient time to a representation to the federal executive as to why she should not resign. Their submissions as well as the mayor's oral representation at the federal executive today have been further and carefully considered, debated, and discussed. In his deliberation, the federal executive could not ignore that the fact that the first time in the city of Cape Town's history, a council-mandated independent investigation took the view that the sitting mayor demonstrated allegedly behavior and actions which, on the basis of extensive evidence before them, including the mayor's own representations, prima facie, constituted gross misconduct, gross dereliction of duty, and the conduct amounted to deceiving of counsel. Thus, these concerns relate to a, a range of related serious governance failures, including the My City Bus Service, the foreshore development projects, and apparent role in actively covering up these failures. This improper conduct includes, but is not limited to actively obstructing remedial and disciplinary action taken for the losses from the My City system, which at this stage are conservatively mm -hmm. estimated at 36 million rand, but could be far greater due to inherent problems within the city systems and data preventing precise reconciliation while the foreshore freeway project is potentially worth billions of rounds. In fact, it is further particularly disturbing that the mayor sought to personally target the officials originally who brought these allegations to the fore and tried to prevent an independent investigation from occurring. Therefore, she has personally authorized multiple recalls against uh, Kesson at the, sp at the special council meeting on the 21st that aimed to prevent investigations into the city manager, the TDA commissioner, Melissa Whitehead. Mm -hmm. These recommendations, those require a signature and her approval of the council agenda. Therefore, the mayor's desire was overturned because the DA caucus called for an independent investigation into the matter. We are of the complete view that while all of these processes must run to their complete course, the mayor, as she herself has avowed, must take the ultimate political responsibility when these issues are come for profound serious allegations which happened under her watch, and in many instances with her active participation. And in this regard, it is noteworthy that the city manager has independently claimed, as reported in the media, that the mayor prevented the proper council from conduct of council business. This will become a subject of the council's disciplinary action that will follow subsequent to this. I believe whilst there's more work to be done for investigators as it relates to pursuing additional information and leads, that the disciplinary process into the official concern must be allowed to run its full course. It remains deeply problematic that only sections, certain sections of the report were in fact made public, whilst in truth, that the entire caucus of the DA voted in support of the recommendations that were put in that report. And so as a consequence of these governance failures, the, ordinary, the Auditor General will soon be in fact issuing his statement on the state of finances in the city of, of Cape Town. And we find a challenge in the delay and the finalization 
of the city's financial audit. I want to urge that as a party and as a people, we would never in any way prosecute a false and a disingenuous narrative which has been prevailed in some of the statements made by the mayor that around the motives of the federal ex executive in pursuing the course of action. We hold ourselves to high regard, we hold any public rep to high regard, and therefore our motives are driven by the interests of the people of Cape Town and our own values as a party. And therefore, the narrative that has been set out there is deeply regrettable, and it's misled the public and masked the very serious concerns as they realize, relate to the leadership and the effective governance of the city. Therefore, it's well within that that the DA has determined that we do everything possible to bring unity of purpose and cohesion into the city of Cape Town, and to build on the successes that have already been achieved, and most importantly, in the current context, do everything we can to manage the current water shortages in collaboration with provincial and national government who share the responsibility of ensuring that everybody, everything humanly possible is done to ensure that the city of Cape Town does not run out of water. This must be, in fact, the most pressing priority of the administration of the city of Cape Town and any of its leadership. That's the reason why we want to expedite processes. Therefore, subsequent to today's meeting, the federal executive has resolved that if, like any leader, like in any other organization, faced with all the challenges that are before you, you have to take serious action. You have to take uh, the fact that you've considered all the preliminary evidence, you've considered the prima facie evidence that has been tabled before the city, and as a party, we hold our constitution high. Therefore, we have made a decision to formally charge and invest and, and ask that the party's federal legal commission investigate the mayor. That those charges preferred against her say that, in fact, either as our constitution outlines in 2.5.4.2, that she's deliberately acted in a manner which impacts negatively on the image and performance of the party, that as it says in 2.5.4.4, fails to carry out his or her duties and responsibility according to the standards by the federal council or the party or the relevant and provincial or regional council or standards required by any or statutory uh, rules of conduct required by the public office he or she holds. 2.5.4.5 brings the good name of the party into disrepute and harms the interests of the party. 2.5.4.6 acts in a manner that is unreasonable and detrimental to internal cooperation in the party. And then 2.5.4.7 unreasonably fails to comply with or reject decisions of the official formations of the party. And these charges are preferred in the sense that if you lay out the charges, with relates to the first one, it comes out of the question around the text message that was sent around, which is the undue interference in the administration. That when you look at improper conduct and unlawful, it was the appointment of, in fact, Limia Esop into the Stadium Management Board, and this matter must be then investigated. That, in fact, she's acted in an improper manner and failed to exercise her duties as displaying sound judgment by failing or refusing to ensure that the performance of the incumbent commissioner of the Transport Development Authority of the City of Cape Town, Melissa Whitehead, and more specifically allegations of poor performance to be properly investigated or taken into account before the appointment processes that leads. When it comes to the question of having failed to perform duties and responsibility according to the FM uh, Finance, uh, the Municipal mm -hmm. Finance Management Act and the Municipal Systems Act, that she's failed to refuse to report and properly account to council in the city of Cape Town regarding irregularities and financial losses reported to her in respect of the contract in the city. The question raised about whether she's failed to perform her duties and responsibilities according to the standard of the federal, federal council and the party or the Municipal Finance Management Act and the Municipal System Act in that she failed or refused to report and properly account to the council of the city of Cape Town regarding irregularities with the bid evaluation uh, process that she's failed to perform her duties and responsibilities according to the standards set out by the Federal Council of the Party in the Municipal Finance Management Act and 
the municipal systems act in that she failed or refused to take all responsible remedial and corrective steps to ensure that Cape Town performed its constitutional and statutory functions by refusing and failing to act in a reasonable or in a proper manner in respect of financial losses in incurred through the contract in respect of the My City project as well as the Volvo chassis. That she's acted in an improper and abusive manner in providing leadership to the caucus of the party that through her words or action intimidating or belittling caucus members who did not agree with her. Refused to accept the official decisions of the party. Uh, and I think all of these will be then matters that will be prosecuted by a federal legal commission. Giving the mayor of the city of Cape Town the right, in fact, to be able to respond to the allegations. We would take it that they are serious enough that it is important for her to charge her, to charge her in contravention of our constitution, to put, in fact, direct leadership into the caucus, and that all the matters of the Federal Legal Commission, that uh, the charges that have been preferred against other members of that caucus, be expedited. And therefore, we've determined that the FLC conclude their investigation expeditiously so that the matter can be brought to a resolution as soon as reasonably possible, whilst at all time respecting procedural fairness and the dictates of national justice. We are, however, acutely mindful, as stated throughout, the need to ensure that stable and effective governments are the city of Cape Town and that there's little distraction as possible from the government serving on all these people while all of these processes are taking place. That will therefore recommend to the caucus that they formally bring a resolution to council that in fact the mayor from any role on managing and directing the city's response to this prolonged drought during the period of these investigations instead that in fact the deputy mayor and the members of the mayoral committee that are responsible for water and former settlements and waste services councillor Zainthia Limbeck will be able to assume overall political leadership and control of the city's response plan because we've got to put a plan in place to ensure that these matters are expedited carefully and that we can deliver on the mandate for cities. This will be asked in particular to engage with the Western Cape Provincial Government and the National Government to ensure that they too play their mandated role in contributing to solutions to the crisis both operationally and financially. They will be requested to present with far greater clarity the city's proactive measures to manage the effects of the crowd, the need to reduce the demand further and the prerequisite source uh, additional funding for revenue losses and to fund the augmentation through the use of tariffs and related charges. In addition, the caucus will be requested to ensure that the council resolves that the operational response plan that will be led and directed by the executive director of informal settlements, water and waste management, along with the relevant of officials with the delegated authority to manage and to determine water restriction levels and water management related to this issue. Further, that the caucus of the city of, of, of Cape Town will be asked to review the delegations of the city, to restore the proper decision-making authority and functioning of the mayoral committee, council committees, and sub-councils. Sub Thus, the organizational restructuring is reviewed and looked at, at great, at, and looked at so that the changes so required to ensure governance that makes progress possible for all residents. We simply, fellow South Africans, don't have time to waste. And it's thus that we've put these measures in place to ensure that governments in the interim will be stabilized in the city of Cape Town. And that, in fact, we drive the residents to avoid a situation where we run out of water. It's these actions that I believe will ensure that we can interrogate the matter properly to be able to clarify to the residents of Cape Town what has gone on and ultimately ensure that our institutional capacity as driven by the Federal Legal Commission can respond to this. I think it will be important that the caucus of the city of Cape Town be guided by the decisions of the structure so that not all structures can make these decisions. Federal executive applied its mind and therefore ultimately we believe in the interest of natural justice and constitutionality that in fact the Federal Legal Commission prefer those charges and run a thorough investigation into the matter. Thank you very much. Thank you, Missy. We'll be happy to take your questions. We'll take four questions at a time. Please just give us your name and which media house we're from. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way. 
Thanks, Donald. Claire? Yeah, I'm Janssen, ENCA. How long does the FLC have to investigate um, these charges? Leanne? Yeah. How long does the FLC have? Leanne? Anyone else? Uh, Carmen? Carmen Lockman Roberts from the SABC. Just building on um, my colleague's question there about whether the mayor reports for duty tomorrow. Um, <coughs> according to Mr. Uh, Mr. Mon, you've also made um, recommendations about what happens with the drought. Does is the mayor now has does she have nothing to do with what's happening with augmentation projects anymore, or has it just completely been handed over to councillors at BLM? All right, one more for this round. <coughs> okay, no more questions. Right, Donald. The question of suspension. We we spend quite a lot of time, in fact, deliberating on that issue. The mayor, of course, must be at work tomorrow, and must report for duty. What we are arguing for is that there are certain matters of the delegation that must be directed back into the mayoral committee and the members that are responsible for the, wo for the water crisis, such as Xanthia Lindbergh, etc. So our expectation is that we've taken... You will remember that as this process has been going, the suspension against the mayor related to party activity, and that ought to continue. Mm -hmm. That has not been lifted. But when it comes to the effective working of the city, she should report to duty because, and in fact, that when you look at even the council resolution that uh, the council meets as to what action they are going to take based on Bowman, those should all be prosecuted so those don't disappear. Uh, and that the management, effectively, we want to make sure that Zantia Lindbergh and the respective members, in fact, deal with that issue of water so that we you can't it makes it very difficult when somebody's facing a particular process to also then be dealing with a very big crisis that is before us and we want to make sure that we don't come near day zero we can do the proper augmentation process and then go from there of course it is our view as the federal as the federal executive what then happens subsequent to that has to be worked out in the caucus itself because it is the caucus that has the duly delicated duties to ensure that they can augment, um, they can change delegations if they need to. But it is the view coming from the f initial report, Bowman's report, to say, let's think about how we manage this issue. So beyond that, the caucus must manage the issue. For it. As far as the FLC timeline, James, I think maybe you can comment on that, but uh, we want it urgently and quickly. Well, we've asked the Federal Legal Commission to ideally conclude its business within 60 days. Um, obviously, that has to be balanced against fair processes. Um, but very frequently, um, the delays in these processes are caused by the unavailability of members and or their legal represent representatives. So what we have asked the FLC to do is to try and... Um, expedite the matter as much as they possibly can so that we can get this matter out of the way and that the charges that have been preferred will either be upheld or dismissed and that life can then go on as a result. All right, so there are any more questions? Uh, so we can do the 60 days from when? From today. Paul? Uh, Paul Beckert of Bloomberg. Um, the role of the Deputy Mayor in all of this, um, Surely he must have understood if he knew these, um, what was going on, he, he has a close working relationship. Um, does he continue his position? Is there any investigation against him as well? And um, it seems like um, Councillor Lamp uh, has become a, a politically more senior than him. Does, is that the way it's working at the moment? <laughs> I don't know if there are any other questions. I don't think there are. Oh, there's one from Jan. The focus must review the um, structures, the use of structures in the city council. Um, what direction did, did you give them in terms of that review? What, what do you think need to change in terms of the structure of council? Yeah, and one last one from Donald. Yes, just to follow up on the, um, uh, the, the, the vote of no confidence in the city of Cape Town and the mayor, uh, will that be driven by the DA caucus itself? 
Will that go ahead at the end of the month before the Federal Legal Commission has reported? I'm just lost at the time frame of that. Jan wants to ask another question. Um, two. The, the Bowman report, the, the mayor had cited some inaccuracies in, in that report. Um, are those also being dealt with? Also, you said that the mayor has equally laid um, charges or, or allegations against members within council. Where is that investigation at as well? Let me just respond to your questions last. The Bowman report will now be Leanne, taken through the process of council. And so council, I think, has given itself 90 days, if I'm not mistaken, to prosecute the Bowman report. And any factual inaccuracies and all of that will be prosecuted through that process. It's well within its right to do so, and I can confer. There are certain things that were not correct. Those must be dealt with in council. The party cannot and will not interfere with that particular process because that's a council process, and councillors are entitled to deliberate on that issue. Paul, the Deputy Mayor, remember when we commissioned, uh, the Federal Executive commissioned a subcommittee to go investigate, the role of the Deputy Mayor was not cited. We are depending on a report to say, who are the respective individuals that create a tension here? And therefore, those individuals we must then bring forward and say, let those tensions. The Deputy Mayor was not cited in that regard. So he remains in his role in this particular instance. And what I wanted to say in the statement quite clearly is that then the question of water augmentation becomes a make uh, process. And equally so, the mayor has a crucial role in playing in that. So it's not to suggest that now there's seniority questions on the table. It's just that our understanding of the genuine working of that particular project must say the person, Julie, who, who heads up the department that must deal with the water and the respective officials in that sits within a MACO portfolio member who is Anthea Linda. And we must capacitate her to be able to do so. Um, Donald, you asked the very uh, question of a vote of no confidence. Our stance now is to say, look, if these investigations must be dealt with, as a party, we must prosecute them. We can't go on on the basis of allegations or any of that. Everybody has the right to respond. Therefore, it would be premature for anybody to move a motion of no confidence, let alone support one, whilst in fact an FLC process is on the go. So when it comes to the ANC one, it's not for us to support it, because we are dealing with the thorough investigations as they contradict our own constitution. And whatever reliance you would be using, because the difficulty is, if you look at the national constitution, section 102 puts a simple threshold around the motion of no confidence, section 89 puts an impeachment process our party and, in fact, the Municipal System Acts would put it somewhere in between those two things. Therefore, the test of confidence must require a threshold upon which you operate on, and equally so, it's either on competence or the function of saying whether or not you are in ill capacitated to do the job. So we have to test those things, and we believe it's important for anybody to be given the right to do so. Therefore, that's why we believe that the FLC is legally capacitated to deal with the matter. So that anybody has the right to whether or not to clear their name or not to clear their name. My job and the job of the DA is to say, if we knowingly know, if you know something, then you must act. It's what we, it's what we pride ourselves of as an organization. It's what we say, here's a standard here. In a country that suffers from state capture and many other issues, if you don't put your threshold here and say, if there are any, if there's prima facie evidence, if there are challenges, you are going to investigate, you are going to prefer charges, you are going to ensure that there's consistency in the process. I believe we would be no different. And ours is to say we are different to our opponents in that when a matter is raised, however difficult it is, we go ahead and we take action. And we take due and rational action so that we are not dealing with these matters in a manner that violates the rights, the laws of the Republic, and in fact our public reps. So in the next couple of months, I will in fact ensure that we engage with the caucus of the city of Cape Town. I, if you want to, I would say this, in fact in many ways we want to put that thing in a new management. 
because ultimately I want to ensure that that caucus functions well, it delivers for the people, and whatever charges, they must be dealt with expeditiously so that we can get on to the business of what we have to do. My only primary interest is the people of Cape Town, and that's why we must act. And it's the primary interest of the Democratic Alliance. Therefore, I want to call upon everybody to ensure that that becomes the primary focus and that this matter be prosecuted thoroughly in the Federal Legal Commission and then post that report will take the requisite action. And that is an agreement in concurrence with all actors in this particular issue. Our crucial focus now must be in the next 60 days and the next uh, three months to focus on this very big crisis that is before Cape Town, which is delivering water and ensuring that we're effective. We can Sorry. take one I'm on one later. Sorry. There's Jan's question about the structures. What about the structures? Uh, maybe I can answer. Yeah, it. maybe you should. Uh, um, just in terms of Jan's question, as I understood it, you were asking about the structures and the recommendations that we made about the structures. Uh, it goes hand in hand with the review of the delegations. We believe that as a result of the ODTP and as a result of the current system of delegations, too much power is centralized, not enough power has been devolved to the committees, to the sub-councils, and to the members of the mayoral committee. Um, so what we will be asking the city council to do is to thoroughly interrogate whether the system is working effectively at the moment and in the interests of the citizens of Cape Town. And if it's not, then to recommend to council <coughs> changes to the delegations that will equip those structures that are provided for in the Structures Act to do what they are intended to do um, to ensure better governance. Right, one final round. You are giving everybody rounds and rounds. Can't tell me the rounds you want to give people. Last round. Lindsay Denkinger, Eyewitness News. Two questions. Firstly, if memory serves, you also asked the speaker and the chief whip to make submissions in this process, but you've been very finding regarding them. And then as far as uh, Maker Member J.P. Smith uh, goes, does he uh, remain um, suspended from party activity? Any uh, further processes against him? Uh, and sorry, I said two, and I'm actually lying, it's three. Um, uh, Last does, round. Does the, um, the may, other than the, the issue of the water and the drought, are the mayor's duties, responsibilities curtailed in any other way in terms of her returning to office tomorrow? Thank All you. Right, and we're being very generous, the bite of the cherry for Donald and Paul. Um, it, it seems to me that um, uh, Patricia DeLille has lost the confidence of the party already. Would it not have been better to suspend her as mayor at, the, at a time when so much now has gone under the bridge? Um, Cape Town could possibly be the first city in the world to run out of water in a few months' time. Um, is the party satisfied over whatever plans have been put in place to avert this? Secondly, have you been, um, has the party through its uh, government structures and provincial governments and looked at the possibility of implementing a state of emergency in the Western Cape? And what other plans? Are there still plans to bring ships, the desalination plants from the Middle East and um, to ensure that this doesn't happen? Thank you. Okay, let me take some and then James, perhaps maybe you can... Um, on, on the question of water, Paul, it's a, it's a crucial question. That's why we're taking all measures possible. The process of using aquifers then becomes crucial, and therefore, as you know, last week Monday, the drilling process around us has begun. There needs to be deliberate actions that mitigate demand. And I think, in that instance, the objective of the city is to ensure that we are operating at below 500 million liters of water per day. That's an objective. And we have to put all measures to ensure that that becomes so, so that we avoid the day zero dynamic. But we want to task the city to ensure that it is responsive, it deals with the process accurately, and that we don't change the objectives. <laughs> so the augmentations plans at this point in time have been about the question of aquifers, but furthermore, we already have some process of desalination. As you know, there might be a few that are already in operation, and those will continue. But that further operational plans, I think I'd rather want to ask the city to be able to communicate on to ensure that Cape Town uh, delivers on that.
uh, I thought that was the last question. Uh, I think, James, you can speak about the speaker and the FLC. This question about uh, confidence. As I stated earlier on, confidence is tested. It is tested against the question of your ability to effect your duties, whether in fact you are consistent with the Constitution, and that ultimately whether you've got capacity to roll that out. It needs to be tested so that it moves it away from simply being the opinion of one or two people and that we move all, any member of, the, of that caucus has raised some concerns. There were some members that I have, we have as a party genuine concerns over and they must face our own disciplinary processes. But I think what's important is until all of this FLC process has been deemed and determined, it would be premature to be able to make a conclusion on that issue. We all have challenges, but all of those must be interrogated in a thorough FLC process. Yes, I'm just about the um, speaker and the chief work. I, I'm afraid the federal executive ran out of time, um, <coughs> so we were not able to conclude that particular discussion. Um, what we have resolved to do is to have a telephone conference probably on Tuesday at which we will deal with this and other related matters that were not dealt with, including uh, the formalization of charges against other councillors um, that flows from the Steenhuisen Committee report. So um, we will finalize that within the next couple of days. Uh, we had a fairly extensive discussion about it, but unfortunately we didn't want to keep you waiting for too much longer. And of course, we can take one on one. <laughs> Thank you very much, everyone, um, and have a lovely evening. How? Sophia, I think.